Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Welcome to the headphone show. And today we are going to do an unboxing and first impressions of the brand new Apple AirPods Max. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm doing the unboxing and first impressions of the Apple AirPods Max here, uh, but just so you guys know, I will also be doing a full review. So with this video here, I'm more gonna just be talking about the sound quality, not so much the features. I will also be doing measurements of this headphone here shortly, so by the time that you guys are seeing this, I will be able to post measurements. But as of this recording, I'm just gonna give you my initial sound impressions here. Um, and so I'm not gonna be doing all of the integration with this first impressions video. In my full review of the AirPods Max, I will be evaluating this with multiple different devices, including an Apple iPhone. Uh, and uh, so we'll test all the integration features then as well. All right. So this is just first impressions for sound quality. Let's begin with the unboxing. I don't know if this knife was needed. Probably not. No, it's not needed. There's uh, this little piece here. I think allows me to uh, open it up. A little, there's a little flap going on here. Yeah, there we go. All right. This is going to be really satisfying for somebody. <laughs> of course, we had to get the pink version. The rest of the guys, uh, I think they bought other versions as well, but this is the one that showed up first. I'm kind of glad that it's the pink version, to be honest. Uh, it's a little bit more fun that way. Okay. It's more like reddish pink. Um, the cups themselves look pink, but the top part here is more kind of like, almost like a salmon color. Um, this, obviously, with the case, there's this... There's this material here. Let me actually just take it out of the box. Let me just take the paper off. This paper is just... This is literally just paper. Feels like there should be an easier way to do this. Alright. The unveiling of the brassiere. <laughs> um... Yeah, this... Okay, so this is like how you would probably hold it if you are just to carry it around. This is... I think it's smaller, actually, than what I was expecting. Um, but yeah, you would you would probably just put this into a backpack or a bag of some kind. I don't really s imagine we'll see that many people actually walking around with this. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, Apple has been able to sort of define what is normal. Uh, I remember even when the AirPods came out, the initial ones, people were sort of like, you're going to have that hanging out of your ear? That's going to be ridiculous. And now, these days, you can't really walk down the street without seeing somebody there with the AirPods Pro or AirPods going on. So it's super normal now. Yeah, okay, so this material here for the case, this is actually really odd. This is not, I thought it was going to be more sturdy, but this is more of just like a, yeah, almost like a rubbery kind of feeling thing with, uh, uh, almost like the, it feels like the underside of leather on the inside. Let me just take this out. That is odd. The case is literally just, it's lit, there's nothing in here. <laughs> now I've been told that you have to put it in the case in order to turn it off, which is a really odd idea. Um, but so far this literally just looks like a case. It doesn't look like it has any electronic components in it. Um, I'm guessing there's more to it than that. It could be, it could be something magnetic, I'm not sure. So here is the AirPod Max in all of its glory. You know, initially when I saw the photos of this, I thought it looked a little bit odd, but given that I'm kind of used to odd looking headphones being in, you know, the high end headphone space and the audiophile space, you know, we have headphones that look pretty darn ridiculous. And uh, seeing these in person now, they don't look quite as ridiculous as uh, I imagined from the photos. This actually looks decent, uh, I gotta say. Now, it's not something that I would have typically associated with Apple's normal design aesthetics. That's normally something they focus on to be a little bit more extra regular, whereas this is, uh, this is not. This is a little bit more flashy, especially the fact that it's pink. Um, but I like, I gotta say, I kinda like the, the color. Okay, there is a little bit of um, spring-loaded action, it feels like, going on here when you, when you kinda move the cups. So this spring action is what is gonna angle the cups inwards and keep it stable on your head. Let's see about extension. It does have very satisfying extension. That felt great to do. Same with this side. So there's a, there's a metal rod here that's on the inside of this piece, and that extends. Whereas the top part is just sort of a mesh fabric going on. This is very satisfying. It almost reminds me of like the kind of mechanism that you get from the Meze Empyrean when you're kind of like, you know, moving the cups uh, to a 
a more optimal spot there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, from what I can see, there are right and left indicators on the inside of the of the cups and the pads. Um, and this material feels odd. The cushiony part is actually really cushiony, like the, the actual piece of foam or whatever it is in there feels really comfy and cushiony. But the material on the outside for the pads feels really strange. Um, it's almost like a sponge kind of material going on. Um, okay, let's see how it is when I wear it. Okay, reasonably comfy. Seems quite noise isolating. Um, there is a little bit of clamp force going on here. Definitely too much clamp force. Um, this is going to be something that, for some people, it's not going to be a problem at all. But if you have a larger head, this is definitely going to be an issue. I feel it at the top right, kind of behind my temples. It's pressing in a little bit too strongly. All right, so this button, all of a sudden, all the noise canceling is off. All the sound is coming in. This button here is what does the uh, ANC. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what else. Okay, now that we're connected up, I'm gonna play some music. I'm gonna simulate the music over top. Obviously I can't play what I'm actually listening to because it would be a copyright strike. But um, just so you guys get a sense, I'm gonna to listen to the normal test tracks that I have. Um, and I'm also going to be doing this with noise canceling on. Right away, this is mega bass, and and it does also have sub bass going on as well, um, more so than what the normal kind of target shelf would ask for. Um, not not in a way that obscures too much of the clarity, like the boat, like the uh, Sony XM4. Okay, let's see how the mids do. This is your typical consumer focused tuning with bass with a bass emphasis that kind of bleeds a little bit into the mids, but not not terribly. Um, and then it's also a little bit relaxed there in the upper mids. Sounds like it's a little bit relaxed there starting around 2K. It's not something I haven't seen before. The treble does come back. Um, so this is more of like a kind of a V-shaped sound, but not dramatically. And this is definitely not on the level of like the XM4's ridiculousness. Um, this is way more balanced with the mids being just a little bit uh, withdrawn there. All right, let's uh, listen for treble a little bit here. Um, this is a total guess here because I'm only really listening to you know, a handful of tracks right now. I'll do more comprehensive testing with this later on. So for the treble frequencies, it's a very smooth treble response that sounds a little bit more focused towards the, the air splash side of things rather than the tonal focus of cymbal hits. Uh, I, I really don't mind it at all. I think for all these noise canceling headphones, this one does treble as good as the best ones. So I don't want to say yet that this is better than other noise canceling headphones in the treble, but this sounds like it, it's at least well balanced and smooth there. Um, and it's not fatiguing or aggressive. And that's a good thing for these types of headphones, in my opinion, right? They don't need to be, you know, perfect or all, you know, the right amount of energy or anything like that. As long as they're well balanced and inoffensive, that that's still good enough. And this definitely is uh, well balanced and inoffensive. Uh, there's definitely something missing, though. Um, something within, yeah, I'm all, I almost want to say in the lower treble is missing, which is uh, potentially also a good thing depending on your preferences. Jesus. Yeah, the bass might actually be a little higher than I thought. This is, um, so as far as the technical performance is concerned, the dynamics here are excellent, actually. It's potentially better than the XM4, which also had decent dynamics. This is difficult to tell on something like this because the bass is boosted and this enhances the perception of, you know, that physical punch and impact. Um, but if you were to equalize this to a more appropriate response, the question is, does it still retain that 
sort of engaging physicality, it won't be quite on the same level. But, you know, if you think about headphones like the Focal Utopia, which are not bass emphasized, the Focal Clear as well, they're not really that bass emphasized if you look at the measurements. But at the same time, perceptively, they still have really a really good physicality and punch to them. And this, the question for me is going to be, does this retain it when we equalize the bass to a more appropriate level? Um, the great thing about this so far is that the sub bass definitely uh, has some presence to it. And then it also sounds like it elevates as it goes down into the sub bass. So that's interesting and potentially a good thing. You know, good bass, in my opinion, is characterized by a well-defined sub bass shelf to make the whole thing sound, you know, distinct and satisfying. And I, I get moments of that with this, but it's not, you know, uh, it's not clean, it's not tight, it's definitely bloated somewhere in there in the bass. One other thing I want to note here is that the soundstage for this headphone is actually quite good for a consumer-oriented closed-back wireless headphone. You know, I recently reviewed the Sennheiser PXC 550 Mark II, and the soundstage there was really not not okay, and that's really the main drawback there with that headphone, in spite of the fact that it had good detail. And actually, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that headphone has better detail than this. This does not have particularly good detail, um, and that's a bit of a shame. But also, I'm not totally surprised. So the technical performance here is much more similar to what you get with the Sony XM4. Whether or not you think that's a bad thing um, is up to you. I definitely would have preferred a little more detail, especially in the mids. It definitely sounds a little grainy there, hazy in the mids and in the upper mids. The treble is pleasant, and it does sound actually reasonably well uh, defined in the treble. And then the bass is just sort of a bloated mess. But the sub bass texture is there and there is detail there uh, also better than that of the xm4 i think for people who are looking for the best wireless noise cancelling experience for certain types of things so far this is in the running uh, i'm not i'm not totally put off by it yet i would not use this instead of a typical wired closed back high end headphone um, but this doesn't need to compete with that, right? It has all these features, it's wireless, it's doing everything else, noise cancelling. This is not something that I think enters into that arena, uh, which is a bit of a shame, and I was kind of hoping that maybe it would it would take steps towards that. But so far, my experience here is that it is not that headphone. This is more something that competes directly with the XM4. And honestly, I would take this over the XM4. Somebody would just like, here's the XM4 and here's the Apple AirPods Max. This does immediately sound better than the XM4's default tonal balance. Now the question is, what can we do with all the DSP functions, the computational audio, the, you know, all the rest of the integration? Is this going to be something that's going to be more useful and therefore worth the dramatic price increase over the XM4? And so for that, you guys are going to have to wait for the next video that we do on this, on this headphone. This is all going to be published in the full written review, but it's also going to be up on the headphone community forum first. So if you guys want a quick peek at that that uh, before it gets you know fully published i'll leave a link in the description for that and you guys can see when that shows up anyways that does it for this quick unboxing and first impressions thanks for taking the time to watch this video and i will see you guys in the next one bye for now see this feels this is bad this is like if if you just like leave this like this these two pieces bash together that seems that seems like not a good idea um and that's also probably why you need this case so apparently this turns it off Maybe there's some sort of like, there's definitely a magnet, some sort of magnetic thing going on in here with this piece. So maybe that is where it senses that it's off.